In this video, we will look at how to apply mesh current method to solve a circuit containing a dependent source. The dependent source in this circuit is highlighted here. We can see that there is a plus minus inside the symbol. This denotes that this dependent source is actually a dependent voltage source. And when we look at its magnitude, the magnitude is in terms of a circuit voltage. So this means that this dependent source is a voltage controlled voltage source. Let's see how mesh current method can be used to solve this circuit. The main steps are indicated here. Step one is to identify and label the mesh currents. This given circuit has two meshes only. Recall that a mesh is a loop that does not contain any other loops within it. Here we have two loops and these are the mesh currents are labeled I1 and I2 and assumed to be in the clockwise direction. Here the circuit contains one voltage source, one independent voltage source and one dependent voltage source. Voltage sources cannot give rise to a super mesh, hence there is no super mesh in this circuit. So we proceed to step three, which is to apply Kirchhoff voltage law to each mesh. So let's start with mesh one at the 65 volt voltage source. So we can see that the mesh current I1 is going, is entering the terminal marked minus and leaving the terminal marked plus. Going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. So we get minus 65. Minus because under passive sign convention, we use a positive sign for a voltage drop and we use a negative sign for a voltage rise. The next term is the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor and this resistor only has current I1 flowing through it. So this gives rise to plus 4 I1. Moving on to the 5 ohm resistor, this resistor has two mesh currents flowing in opposite direction. And because we are applying KVL to mesh 1, we give priority or precedence to the direction of I1. So this gives rise to plus 5 I1 minus I2. The last component in this mesh is the 6 ohm resistance and the only current through it is I1. So this gives 6 I1 is equal to 0. Moving on to mesh 2, again we have four circuit elements. We can start anywhere. Let's start from the 8 ohm resistor. So this is a voltage drop and this is 8 I2. Moving on to the dependent source, we can see that I2 is entering the terminal marked plus and leaving the terminal marked minus. Going from plus to minus is a voltage drop. So we write this with a positive sign 8, sorry, we write this with a positive sign which is 3V delta. The next is term is a voltage drop. So this is 15I2. Now for this last 5 ohm resistor, now we give priority to the direction of I2 because we are applying Kirchhoff voltage law to mesh 2. So this gives plus 5 I2 minus I1 is equal to 0. Whenever the circuit has a dependent source, we need to write the dependent source constraint equation. And this means relating the variable that is controlling the magnitude of the voltage source to the mesh currents in this case. So we need to relate V delta to I1 and I2. We can see that V delta is the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor and only mesh current I1 is flowing through this resistor and also I1 is entering the, the terminal marked positive and leaving the terminal marked negative. So this means V delta is 4 I1 with a positive sign. This completes the process of writing the circuit equations for this circuit and we have three equations and three unknowns I1, I2 and V delta and these can be easily solved to show that V delta comes out 16 volts, I1 is 4 amps 
and I2 is minus 1 amp. The negative sign here is signifying that we assumed I2 will flow in clockwise direction, but actually this current is flowing in the anti-clockwise direction. Once the equations are solved, we can solve for the circuit variables. In this case, we have to find the power associated with the dependent source. So the power associated with the dependent source is the product of the voltage and the voltage is the magnitude of the voltage source. So this is the voltage drop across the source and the current through this source is I2. We use passive sign convention to decide the sign of this power calculation. We can see that I2 is entering the terminal marked plus. So we use power calculation with a plus sign. Now we can just substitute values. So this gives 3 times 16 and the current is minus 1 amp. So this gives minus 48 watt. This means that this dependent source is supplying power in this circuit. In one of the previous videos, we solved the same circuit using node voltage method and the solution is summarized here. When we solve the circuit using node voltage method, similar to the mesh current method, we arrive at three equations and three unknowns and the power dissipated works out to be minus 48 watt, which is the same. Thus, for this given circuit, solving the circuit using node voltage method or mesh current method uh, is comparable in complexity because we uh, end up with three equations and three unknowns. This completes the solution to this example.